Welcome back to the Gun Dungeon. Still sitting here loading up some 380, 95 grain Winchester full metal jacket bullets here. This is actually about 30 seconds after I stopped the camera from the knife reloading and rambling. So like I said, I'll do more than one of these at a time. So I have them and I don't have to do one every week. So sometimes I'm wearing the same clothes and I promise it's not, it's not the time period apart in what you're seeing the videos. Most of the time it's 35, 40 seconds. But anyways, today we're gonna to talk about why I like 6.5 Grendel. And as you know, I've been fighting with one for a little bit. If you've been watching my content, you know this. I've been fighting with one for a little, little bit, but we're getting there. I think I've got it worked out with BCA, as I said. But maybe I've already posted a video of it by the time this video comes out with me already having a solution. Who knows? So I probably ought to just quit talking about that and move on to why I like the Grendel cartridge itself. One, it is a very capable cartridge, no matter what you want to do with it, in an AR-15 platform. Now, I'm also a 7.62x39 uh, fan as well. Now, if I was... If I was to pick between 5.56 or 7.62x39, I'm going to take 7.62x39 all day long. But 7.62x39 has its downfalls in comparison to 6.5 Grendel. One of those being that 7.62x39 requires kind of an oddball bullet size. You know, it's a 30 caliber, but it's not a standard 308 diameter bullet like most 30 caliber American rifle cartridges have. It takes a 310 or a 311. And you're pretty limited on your bullet selections if you want like, you know, hunting bullets, self-defense type bullets, stuff like that. You're, you're fairly limited, especially in comparison to 308 or even .224 bullets, which is what the 5.56 shoots. You know, you got a lot more bullet options in, for 5.56 than you do a 7.62.39. But now we move to the 6.5 Grendel and the .264 diameter bullets are abundant. They are plentiful. There's all kinds of options out there. Not a whole lot of cheap plinking bullet options. I will say that. The cheap, just full metal jacket stuff seems to still be fairly expensive, but you know, it's a whole lot cheaper than if you go buy a 6.5 Grendel factory ammo. But you know, we're talking, is that a 32? I will be damned. You got me a 32 in my 380s. Come on. Oh, there you go. But, anyways, what's it say? Oh, we're talking about the 6.5 Grendel. From a reloading perspective here, another perk, especially today's times, is over 762x39, is that it takes small rifle primers. Whereas 762x39, I start loading up some plinking ammo or whatever for it, because you know, you can't buy the steel anymore, hardly. At least not cheap like you could. Now I'm soaking up some a lot of my large rifle primers which are super expensive these days and hard to find right now for some reason. Hopefully you're watching this video a year later and this is completely not the truth while you're watching this a year later, hopefully, hoping that's the case. But as you're watching it right now in 2024, large rifle primers are expensive and rare. So 6 Grindle allows me to shoot a very capable cartridge in a semi-automatic platform that uses small rifle primers and has plentiful bullet selections. So that's why I like it over 762x39. I've already said why I like it over 556. Kinda, maybe. I don't know if I have or not. But I'm going to again anyways. And that is, it's just flat out more capable. Now you take a standard 556 30 round magazine 
you're going to get 30 rounds in it, like I just said. Take that same length Elander magazine. Uh, you know what? They don't monetize these anyways because I'm reloading. I'll show you. Standard Elander 6.5 Grendel magazine. That's the same length as a 30 round 5.56 mag. And you get 26 rounds. So you're losing four rounds in the same size magazine to the 5.56. Five, but that is not a, it's not a loss at all as far as actual firepower because the 6.5 Grendel is so much superior in terms of ballistically superior terminal ballistics, the whole nine yards over 5.56 five, that the, the four rounds is nothing. So to me anyways. And for those of you that have wondered about the tapered case and stuff since 6.5 Grendel goes parent from a tapered case cartridge, those E-landers right there work great for me. I have not had very, very good luck with the C product mags, I think. The ones that look more banana shaped. Look here. I just loaded a bullet. I seated the bullet and when I seated it, I could feel that it, it, it seated too easy. Come on. Let me get my mug out. There we go. And split the heck on that. So toss that in the recycle pile. That's how when you get used to a press, you can feel when something's just off. But what was I saying? Oh, ballistically superior to 556. Five, now, I, I'm not going to say that it does all things better than 556 five, because one thing that 5.56 five, does better is you can carry more for less weight and you're typically going to have faster follow-up shots with 5.56 five, because the recoil isn't as bad. I'm not saying 6.5 five, is bad, but it's comparable to 7.62 by 3.9, which is slightly more than 5.56 five, and it will make your follow-up shots slightly slower. So there's that. But, you know, when you're talking about a do-anything, do-all cartridge, it's it's 6.5 Grendel all day long, and it's in the a AR-15 platform. Not even a question. If I'm limited to an AR-15 platform, there, give me another 32, I believe. You know, and a case full of... I might as well just start loading 32 here in a minute, I guess. <laughs> but anyways, when you're talking about a do-all, it's just way, way, way more superior than 5.56. Five, and especially you start talking about reaching out or something like that, any kind of distance. That, that high BC, heavier bullet is going to do way, way better. And you know, we're not talking about just a little bit heavier bullet over 5.56. Five, we're talking typically double the bullet weight. I mean, most of the time it's 55, 60 grain bullets with 556. Five, I know you can get up 70 grain or whatever, but you know, standard load for 65 grain is 120, 123 grain bullet. So literally double what your 556 five, is shooting. <clears throat> but like I said, if I'm limited to an AR-15 platform and I need a do-it-all cartridge, it's going to be the Grendel. Now, if I'm not limited to AR-15 platform, if I can bump up to an AR-10 platform or something like that, I'm probably going to go 308 for a do-all, you know, any type of utility type cartridge. And strangely enough, I haven't made the jump to 6.5 Creedmoor in anything. I'm still stuck in 30 caliber when it comes to larger, which I'm a 30 cal fan. I don't know anything I'm really not a fan of as far as cartridges. <laughs> oh yes, I do. That 8.6 blackout. I am not a fan of that. I don't understand its relevance. And my cousin Luke's been showing me this stuff for this guy's claiming the one and three twist. I said that correctly, one and three twist. The extreme rotation on it is giving it a terminal ballistic advantage. And I just, I don't buy it. I don't buy it at all. But to me, subsonic is subsonic. If you're if you're required to shoot subsonic, just give me a 300 blackout. I, I don't need a neutered bigger cartridge. But anyways, yeah, I'm yet to make the jump to 6.5 Creedmoor for some reason. But I love me some 6.5 Grendel. 
I don't know. It's just one of those things. And it, it, it seems not so much with this 18 inch PCA barrel I'm fine with, but it seems like it just lends itself to be an accurate round. I don't know why. Like my 16 inch barrel, I don't know that I've that I've shoved a load in it yet that it, that won't shoot sub in my way. It shoots everything. It just boom stacks it right in there, lights out. And it's I think you know just that 264 bullet just is a is a good good little window there for accuracy uh, tend to be long sleek you know slippery bullets and the, you know the, the cartridge shape itself the design of the actual brass itself lends itself to to more of a precision type round if you look at a lot of precision rounds you'll see that kind of sharp tapered shoulder on a lot of them like the Ackley improved and stuff was all kind of you know working on the shoulder and the Grendel cartridge kind of already has that so this is all just my opinion I haven't I haven't put the put my money where my mouth is on as far as researching it I'm just going by what what I see and what I observe but in my experience real life experience the cartridge really does lend itself to just be naturally accurate for some reason. But yeah, easy to shoot, easy to load for, fairly economical to load for once you have your brass. Uh, plenty of capacity, plenty of horsepower. What's not to love about 6.5 Grendel? I guess that's should been the topic of the conversation. And instead of being at like 12 minutes right now, we'd probably be at like three minutes and y'all be eating dinner instead of listening to me yap if we just said what's not to like about Grendel because there's not very much I wouldn't have anything to say so it'd be a really short reloading and rambling but it's not this one's going to be over 12 minutes so that's what I got for you today guys hope you enjoyed if you did don't forget to hit like and subscribe and until next time stay tuned